I think being gay, um, for me, I, I wouldn't say I totally lead with it, but it arrives quite quickly after I do. So I was born in 78, and being born in 78, the first Pride ever was only six years before. So, you know, it feels like a long time ago now. I think, although I knew I was gay, I probably struggled for maybe five years. Um, I think I would have found it easier to have been normal. I told a mate of mine when I was about 16, and she didn't really react. So I was a bit freaked out. I was like, wow, is this news so shocking, you can't even react. It was probably 12 months later when I was with another mate. He said to me, he showed me a newspaper article, a magazine, and he said, like, semi-naked women, woman and semi-naked man. He was like, so which one do you find more attractive? Uh, and I was like, yeah, so I'm gay. Uh, and that was a huge weight off, massively. And I was 17 then, uh, and I then pretty much told everybody. But, you know, I, once I kind of uh, found my feet, so to speak, I was uh, totally fine. I mean, I wouldn't change being gay for anything now. Everybody knows I'm gay. I have three grandchildren, um, and it has no impact uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so I'm, I'm very out and very gay. So I have a very addictive personality and that plays out in lots of different ways. I think in some ways very positively. Um, I'm sure it's a contributing factor in being successful. I have a, you know, a, a very intense drive in me. I am not a middle of the road girl. You know, I am all or nothing. Just over six years ago, I went to go and get some help with drinking. I do identify as somebody who has a problem, have a problem with the amount of alcohol they were consuming. You know, if I wasn't drinking, I was thinking about it or I was recovering from it. Um, and it just became all consuming. Uh, the change in me in the last six years is a marked shift. I would say I'm the happiest I've ever been uh, not drinking. Um, I found it very tricky at the outset um, and I have learnt to operate um, in a different way and I've also learnt to like myself more as part of that process. My stepdaughter Charlotte got very sick with uh, meningitis. When we first got a phone call um, they said oh, you need to come to the hospital. Um, she was in organ failure. It's a 50% chance that she'll be alive. Uh, you need to come to the hospital. They couldn't get it under control. She was put into a medically induced coma. Uh, they then have to remove the dead part of the body. And it was, <clears throat> um, it was like a horror film. Um, and you know, the, the real nightmare was for her. Of course, she's 14 years old and is waking up less her feet, less than her legs, than hands. You know, time stands still and you almost don't think the rest of the world is actually carrying on. But she would have been in hospital for, in total, probably nine months. Um, and at least 50% of that was in ITU. And it was unbelievable uh, and unbelievably tough for her. Uh, and, and of course, that hasn't, you know, gone away wholesale because she's been through a kidney transplant and will need to go through another one. In the probably 12 months after Charlotte came out of hospital, uh, I find myself, I found myself reading uh, horror books and for somebody who's terrified of things like that, I realised that I was totally desensitised and I had to reconnect with feeling and I had to reconnect with emotion, good or bad. Uh, she continued fighting and continues fighting to this day. Uh, but undoubtedly, it was the most traumatic time of my life, let alone hers. I think it has coloured me massively as an individual. Um, I think it colours me every time I have to go to a hospital for any reason. Um, you know, the smell of hand sanitizer or devices ringing in a hospital. Uh, I've, had, uh, I've had years of, of therapy. Um, after Charlotte got sick to, um, to try and reconcile some of it in my head. Uh, Charlotte's now 28. Um, she's still lively. Um, she's got a, a real kind of 
steel determination about her. She now has a two-year-old. She's an amazing mum and um, it's incomprehensible what Charlotte's been through. I mean, I think we are incredibly lucky to have something like the NHS. It has created a, a drive in me that really wants to push for equality, um, not just for the UK, but you know, on a worldwide basis, people should be entitled to healthcare. I've always wanted to help. The roles, when I look back over my career that have been most fulfilling for me, have not been ones where I have been only creating revenue for an organisation. So being a CEO for me is um, a lifelong ambition. I've always wanted to run my own company. I was a bit apprehensive, if I'm honest, because I've done uh, board level roles before, but I have never set up, grown, uh, and then run a company. Um, you know, you can be strategic, you can be very operational, you know, you're pretty much having discussions about the strategy and then you can be cleaning the bloody floors. So it's every conceivable level. And, uh, and for me, I quite like that variety, um, but I think it's a learning curve. I've learned that it is fine to ask for help, absolutely fine, better than fine. Um, I've learned that um, chasing money is not my default, it's not my DNA. I've learned that you don't have to go to work in a suit every day, which is quality, because I don't like that idea. I have learned that I can do anything I put my mind to, uh, I think I probably suspected that, uh, but I have proven it.